This presentation considers a few common everyday subjects of economics and finance. It involves historical time series analyses of the quantities or metrics of interest as shown. Inflation is the increase in the price of goods and services over time. For the U.S., the Fed computes the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, monthly. Inflation is the rate of month-to-month -month change of the CPI. Consumer Price Index is an estimate of the cost of common goods and services for a typical consumer. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics compile a list of goods and services, and estimate their relative weights for a consumer. Of the eight categories, three largest expenditures of a typical consumer are housing, transportation, and food. As the prices of the categories change month to month, the CPI also changes, which is called inflation. Negative inflation, or the decrease of the CPI, is also called deflation. A more common formula for inflation is the continuously compounded formula. The formula is based on the exponential function definition of inflation. Both formulas yield comparable results as long as the rate of inflation is small over the time interval, which is one month in the US. Examine inflation data. From 1947, since the record began, the consumer price index has risen by a factor of 13 or so. On the log scale, it appears there have been only three episodes of significant inflation. Post-World War II economy adjustment, the oil crisis of mid-70s and early 80s economy. And the COVID-19 pandemic economy. Persistent high inflation is not a common occurrence in the U.S. economy. The month-to-month -month CPI change, is the inflation rate. Its statistical distribution is the usual and ubiquitous double-sided Laplace distribution. Besides the three high inflation episodes mentioned, there are also short-term occasions of spiky inflation and deflation. The large deflation spike in 2008 was associated with the financial crisis, and the deflation in early 2000 was due to COVID-19 pandemic. Inflation, deflation, and recession are related, and are the topic of public concern. In this historical context, since 1947, today inflation of 2022 is indeed among the highest episodes since 1980s. The cumulative distribution functions show that May 2022 inflation is greater than 95% of all prior inflations in the record. Many Americans born after early 1980s, never experienced this level of inflation previously. Examine Monetary Supply M2 and Inflation The total amount of money available to use, of everyone in an economy, is called monetary supply. Detailed and precise economic concepts are outside the scope of this presentation. A citation of the source of this illustration is shown for the interested readers. It is sufficient to consider M1 and M2 as the volume of money available for economic activities. M1 being the most liquid money for transactions such as buying and selling. M2 includes M1 plus additional money in consumer savings. A more formal definition of M1 and M2 can be found at FRED website. The definitions are not etched in stone. In May 2020, the Fed revised the metrics of M1 and M2, as shown for the interested readers. The reason for the interest in M2, is the economic postulation that, one of the cause of inflation is the availability of the money supply, that is M2. The more money is available to chase a fixed volume of goods and services, the higher will the prices be, which is inflation. The chart shown an off-sided example using case data. The horizontal axis shows the change of M2, and the vertical axis shows the inflation for many world economies. The chart suggests a trend, that the more money M2 is available, 
the more is the inflation. The case data approach is one way to study the hypothesis. A different approach is to examine the time series data. Instead of comparing different world economies, it is possible to consider the same economy over time. Shown here is a chart of the US M2 and inflation data over approximately 150 years from 1870 to 2022. Is there a correlation? Does a change of M2 at any point in time corresponds to a change of inflation? Historical anecdotal review and visual inspection can give some insight, but such an analysis is not quantitatively rigorous. Monetary supplies M1 and M2 of the US have increased approximately by a factor of 80 or so from the 1960s to 2022. For reference, the US GDP in quarterly interval is also shown. The abrupt jump of M1 in May 2022 is due to a change of its definition by the Fed, as mentioned previously. The change of M2 will be correlated with inflation. The correlation between the change of monetary supply M2 over time and the inflation over the same period is a common and well known problem for time series data. An important concept is the time response. Consider the recent situation from 2018 to 2022. In early 2020, there was a deflation because of a slowdown economy in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Subsequently, the US Congress enacted a quantitative easing stimulus package, which resulted in a spike of M2, that is among a handful historically largest increases over many decades. This led to the presently prevalent speculation, that this, also causes the historically largest rise of inflation in mid-2022. If the hypothesis is correct, then it is necessary to consider the time difference between the two events, the spike of M2 increase, and the rise of inflation. This is known as the response time, or temporal response function, an essential concept in all time-dependent phenomena. For this particular case, the response time is approximately one and a half to two years. And it is necessary to be taken into considerations in doing time series correlation. Consider the change of M2 versus time. The graph is shown horizontally for a reason that will be clear shortly. At a given time t, let the value of M2 change be x as shown. Consider the inflation. At the time t plus tau, where tau is a variable to be determined later. Let the inflation value be y. x and y together, form the coordinates of a point. Collection of all similar points form a scatter graph of M2 change, which is plotted along the x-axis, versus inflation, which is plotted along the y-axis. If the two variables are correlated, the scatter graph, as shown, can be analyzed for the statistical properties of correlated variables. The XY data can also be presented with a histogram as shown here. As is, it does not appear M2 change and inflation have any visually obvious statistical correlation. The distribution appears like a two-dimension Laplace distribution, of two random uncorrelated variables. A problem is that each variable, being measured at least at the monthly sampling rate, fluctuates too much. Whereas their correlation can happen over many months or even years. Hence, a further technique of data processing is necessary as shown in the follow. This is an example of correlated variables. It is about the change of the gross domestic product, versus the change of unemployment rate, which, is a topic discussed later on. Here it is only used for our quick digression to introduce the notion of correlated variables. Consider the data. The white vertical bar on the left represents an x-coordinate slice, to select a subset of data within its width, as the bar sweeps from left to right, or vice versa, the data points within its window are highlighted, and the mean, that is, the average of the selected data, is represented by the red bullseye point. The bull's eye point sweeps a slanted path as shown. Although the bull's eye point path is rough, 
it shows one thing. That the vertical values of the data, in this case, the change of the unemployment rate, varies as a function of the horizontal position of the bar slice, which, in this case, is the change of the gross domestic product. This means that the vertical or y variable, is not independent from the x variable. Another way to think of it is this, if x is known within a slice, then y can be expected to be roughly to average near the red bull's eye point. The conditional statement, if x is such and such, then y is such and such, is the fundamental definition of conditional probability, and is the criterion to determine, if two variables are correlated. The same thing can be done with a horizontal slice. Again, there is a rough path that shows the correlation of x and y variables. Later, it will be shown that linear regression can be used to estimate a straight line that correlates the two variables. Back to our current data, change of monetary supply M2, versus the inflation rate. Both the vertical and horizontal slices result in only ragged paths, that are either mainly horizontal or vertical, in the main cluster, neglecting a few outlier data points. They are not slanted with a dependent relationship or correlation between X and Y. This is an example of variables that are not obviously correlated, unlike the example on the left-hand side. They don't appear to be correlated, however, only as raw, unprocessed data. As mentioned, data processing are sometimes necessary, to properly assess the underlying trend or relationship. There are two data processings. One is smoothing, and the other is time shifting. The high fluctuation data are smoothed out, using the moving average technique. At any given time, data within a time window of a certain duration, such as 20 months shown, is selected. The mean of the selected data is applied, giving a new data point. The blue curve represents the new data points, which are called moving average data. It is smoother than the original. In the follow, observe the moving average data for different time window durations. The data curve goes from being as fluctuating as the original to smoother and smoother as the time window broadens. The same technique is applied to inflation data. This technique is applied as needed throughout the analyses in this presentation. A window that is too narrow may retain too much irrelevant fluctuations. A window that is too wide may lose significant information. The time window is thus an important parametric variable, which is related to, and can be used, to determine the response time, tau, of the correlation. For example, the mortgage rate can be shown to have a one-week response, to a change of the US 10-year treasure note yield. COVID-19 death, can be shown to peak approximately 14 days, after a COVID positive diagnosis. In this presentation, the response times between various variables, such as inflation, M2, unemployment rate, gross domestic product and recession, and the stock markets, will be seen. First consider raw data without any processing. The top left chart shows M2 change and the inflation rate. The lower left chart is the data scatter plot, with the plus linear regression result. The shaded region is the two times covariance ellipsoid. Its axes, shown by the arrows, are nearly parallel with the X and Y axes, confirming the earlier visual speculation that the two variables, as is, are uncorrelated. The best fit straight line is indeed horizontal, and its estimated slope, A hat, is very near zero. The two right charts are the 2D and 3D version of the same thing. They show the estimates of parameters A and B of the linear model. The ellipsoid top left shows the 95% confidence region of the estimates. It intersects with the zero line, which means that there is less than 95% confidence that the slope is not zero. This is also known as the null hypothesis. That there is not enough confidence to declare a relationship between the change of M2 and inflation. The bottom right is the 3D plot of the probability distribution of the errors of the estimate A hat and B hat. The cyan plane marks zero slope value, which is the same as the cyan line in the 2D chart. Again, 
the intersection of the multinormal probability distribution function, and the zero slope plane, indicates that the slope is not statistically significant to differ from zero. In other words, there is no statistically significant correlation between the two raw variables. Now, moving average data smoothing is applied, starting from 2 month window to 12 months. Observe the data change, and the related statistical calculations. As the data are smooth hand, the scatter plot covariance ellipsoid is smaller. The linear slope, although still not statistically significant, starts to tilt toward positive, which is more consistent with the expectation that an increase of M2 should bring higher, not lower inflation. This data smoothing step is to prepare for the next step, which is time response. As mentioned previously about the time response hypothesis, in the follow, the inflation data is time shifted backward, and its correlation with M2 change, is studied as a function of the time shift parameter tau. It is evident that, for a time shift around 20 to 30 months, the positive correlation between M2 change and inflation, is statistically significant. The slope parameter error probability distribution function, as shown in both 2D and 3D charts, is quite distanced from zero. It means that the correlation between M2 change and inflation, for this range of time shift, is beyond any pure random coincidence. It also means that the hypothesis of a time response of one and a half years, to two and a half years, is quite plausible. As indicated by the arrows in the time shift charts, corresponding episodes of peak M2 increases, and subsequent inflation can even be identified. Even a 60-year period of US economy offers only a few prominent episodes that practically determine this time shift behavior. Nevertheless, if this is applied to the COVID pandemic M2 increase in 2020, the inflation of mid-2022 is still modest, and, in the most optimistic scenario, it is peaking and on the gradual decline over the next six months or so. To summarize, to study the change of monetary supply M2 and inflation over time, data for the US from 1960 to 2022 are used and plotted here. There are a few notable peaks of M2 increases and inflation peaks as indicated by the arrows. A group of peaks are associated with the historically high inflation period of the mid-1970s and early 1980s. A high peak in 2020 is associated with the COVID-19 stimulus package, and there is an inflation peak of mid-2022. The inflation data is time-shifted. For the sake of graphical clarity, the inflation data is plotted below the M2, and the original inflation data. The time shift tau, varies from 1 to 30 months backward in the previous illustration, but here, for the sake of simplicity, shown up to 24 months. Without the time shift, there is no statistical correlation between M2 change and inflation. With the time shift, the correlation between M2 change and inflation is statistically significant. A caveat is that the correlation appears to come from a few peaks in the 1970s and 1980s. And also the COVID-19 related peaks from 2020 to 2022. The rough linear model fit result means the follow. The intercept value, B hat, means that even if there is no increase of M2, there will always be a baseline inflation of 0.1%. The slope value, a hat, being 0.4, means that every 1% increase of M2 can lead to 0.4% higher inflation. The 2020 M2 increase is truly a statistical outlier. The 2022 inflation as of May, is still below the model expectation.